Hi, I'm VK, and this is the first episode in my series on Entity AI. The Entity AI system in Minecraft is quite complex, and not something I've seen covered before. Uh, people sometimes do videos on specific mobs or on particular parts of the system, but I wanted to do something more overarching that covers how the system actually works as a system, rather than specific details of particular mobs. Of course, examples are useful for learning, so I'm going to talk about one mob each episode. To start off with, let's talk about one of the simplest mobs, slimes. You probably already know that slimes have quite a simple AI. You can tell just by looking at them roughly what they're doing. They'll hop towards whatever target they've chosen, which could be a player or could be an iron golem, and they will try and attack that target. They'll also swim in water, and if they don't have a particular target, they'll just kind of randomly hop around. Something you may or may not know about slimes is that they don't actually actively attack anything. You're simply damaged when they touch you, which is part of the reason that slimes can attack so fast, and large slimes in particular can deal so much damage in a short space of time. So taking that into consideration, what do they actively do? Well, they swim, they will face towards their target, otherwise they will look in a random direction, and they will move. They'll also track players and iron golems as possible targets. In slightly more formal language, they have four goals, swim, face towards target, random look, and move, as well as two targeting goals, which target players and iron golems, respectively. A goal in the Entity AI system is a task that can be performed, possibly based on some controls. Controls are the system by which goals control an entity. All mob entities have a look control, a move control, a jump control, a body control, and a target control. What these controls do should be fairly self-evident by their names. The look control controls where the entity is looking, the move control controls its movement, the jump control controls whether or not it is jumping, the body control controls how its body looks, and the target control controls what mob it's targeting currently. Each control can have at most one goal making use of it at a time. This means that if two goals could both be started, and both would make use of the same control, only one of them can run. To determine which goal runs in a situation like this, there is a numeric priority. The goal with the lowest numeric priority will be the one to run. A goal with a low numeric priority can even replace a goal with a higher numeric priority if it's already running, but only if that goal is able to be stopped at the current moment. This means that in some situations, a goal that should be stopped to run a goal with lower numeric priority may actually prevent itself from being stopped until it's finished performing some important task. So how does this apply to our friends the slimes? Well, here's a list of their goals and the associated priorities. As you can see, the swim goal has the lowest priority, meaning it will run first whenever it's able to start namely when the slime is in water. However, it's only associated with the jump and move controls, meaning that most other goals will still be able to run despite the swim goal being active. The next goal down is the face toward target goal, which controls the slime's look in order to face it towards its current target. Since this goal only makes use of the look control, it could run at the same time as a goal which makes use of a different control, for example the swim goal. Next is the slime's random look goal. This also makes use of the look control, but it has a higher numeric priority than the face toward target goal, which means it will only run when the slime does not have a target. 
And finally, we have the move goal. This skull makes use of the jump and move controls, which notably means it cannot run at the same time as the swim goal. There are also the two targeting goals. You'll notice that the player's targeting goal has a lower numeric priority than the iron golem targeting goal, meaning that players will be preferred over iron golems. Let's go back to the theory for a minute and talk about the goal selector. This is the code responsible for choosing which goals should be active and it applies to both regular goals and targeting goals. Every tick, the goal selector first checks through every goal that is currently running. If it should stop running, or if a control that it makes use of has been disabled, it will stop it. Then the goal selector checks through all goals that are not currently running. If one is able to run, makes use of no controls that are disabled, and if there are any goals running on the controls that it uses currently, is able to replace those goals, then the goal will start. And that's basically it. The goal selector is relatively straightforward. Of course, the full Entity AI system is a bit more complex than this and involves several things we've not talked about yet. But we'll save that for next time. Hopefully you found this useful. If you did, that's great. If not, let me know how I can improve it. I'm always open to suggestions. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or ask me in my Discord. Bye!